Good day, folks. It's Sony Fortunato from the technology firm. I'm going to go through this uh, real quick. It's going to be a pretty straightforward little exercise. It's going to deal with uh, slicing packets from the command prompt, a little bit about a batch file, comparison with loading a file through the GUI, why to do it, when to do it, and how to do it. Before I get into it, as always, if you guys haven't yet, subscribe, like, all that good jazz with my social media, YouTube, and whatever else you can find me on. And here we go. So we've got a trace file here. It's 3.3 gig, which, be honest with you, is becoming the norm because people have packet streaming device, uh, packet capture devices that stream to disk, and the trace files could be 3 gig, 10 gig, whatever. And we're getting more and more reasons why we need to chop this down. And the biggest reason is usability, right? Try to load a 3 gig file into Wireshark, and you'll see that'll take a while. Wireshark, I don't think, was ever built to handle trace files that big just because at the time we never thought there'd be a trace file that big to deal with. But that being said, if you do have a big trace file, what do you do with it? Let's talk about that. The first thing I want to show you is a little tip or trick if you haven't seen this video before, and that's with Wireshark itself. I turned on this little feature down here called the load time. What that's going to do is when I open a trace file, it's going to tell me how long it takes to load in Wireshark. In this example, when I compare the command prompt sliced versus split files and all that good jazz I probably want to time how long it takes and you can use a stopwatch or whatever you want to use but this is just so much easier and to do that you simply go to edit we'll go down to preferences and in here you'll see layout and under layout there'll be a little check box that I've checked off called show file load time and you simply check that off, click OK, and it'll be down at the bottom of the screen. So now we know to load a 3. Point, was it 3.3 gig? 3.3 gig, yep, file took one minute, two seconds. So it took over one minute. All right. Now what we're going to do is from the command prompt, I'm going to uh, chop this thing up. So how do we do that? Well, first thing we do is you put this in a folder and we put it on our machine and there I can see there's my three gig trace file and there's a little batch file that I'm going to introduce you to in just one moment but the little trick if you did not know this I'm just gonna move this over for a second when you go to the address bar if you just type CMD and you hit enter the command prompt will appear and the cool thing about that it'll take you right to that folder if you did not know that so you don't have to change directory change directory change directory and from there we can do whatever we need to do now the batch file why did I do this? Well, I wanted an easy way to uh, replicate, reproduce, and consistently duplicate what I just did. Batch file is the best way to do this. So this is a simple Windows batch file that's not very extensive at all, and I'll walk you through this. Echo off and CLS is clear screen. I put those all at the beginning of my batch files. Um, I'm not going to get into why. I just do it. You don't have to. It's just a preference. Echo, whatever I type after echo gets displayed on the screen slicing trace file so that'll pop up on my screen echo start it at and this is important right so this is time so percent time percent and that will display the current time because that's what I want to do I want to tell me what the current time is and then it executes the command edit cap dash s to slice it it's actually snap len if you look it up in the edit cap help screen so dash s, how much do I want to slice this by? 128 bytes. I'm not going to get into why you'd want to do this because there's a lot of reasons. I have other articles and videos about that. And there's the name of the file that I want to chop up, 3gb.pcapng. And then after that, the name of the new file that is sliced. I just called it sliced. You can call it whatever you like. And then we echo, display something on the screen, completed at whatever time. So I have the start time, and that's the end time. And I'll know exactly how long it took to slice that trace file. Down here we're going to split that trace file. So splitting is I'm going to take that trace file that's now sliced at 128 bytes and I'm going to chop them up into a bunch of little tiny trace files. In this case I chose 500,000 frames. Right, That's what I chose. You can use whatever variable you want. I just chose this for the exercise. And again, I have the start time and the end time. So it's actually a pretty straightforward little batch file, right? It's not really complicated at all. So then over here, all I have to do is type the name of the batch file, slice and split dot bat, enter, and off it goes to the races. So it took one minute to load this, right, using the GUI. How long is it going to take to slice this? Well, let's find out in a moment. So that started at 1254.45, and it ended at 1254.55. 
So that's all of 10 seconds, right? That's how long it took to slice it. Not to load it, just to slice it. And then to chop it up into a bunch of little files, that took like 1254, 1255. Uh, I don't know. What are you going to call that? Uh, 14 20 call 20 seconds why not so about 20 seconds so now we've got if this works and we go to that folder we should see a new sliced trace file called sliced and a whole bunch of itty bitty ones after that so let's take a look here and we have exactly what we thought so we have our sliced trace file and then we have all these guys which make up that trace file as well so first things first, the 3.3 meg, 3.3 gig, sorry, 3.3 gig trace file is 900 meg. So that's considerably smaller. In my opinion, still a little unusable for most Wireshark, uh, I'm going to say, uh, exercises, just because it takes so long to go through statistics screens and load stuff and all that nonsense. And now we have our split ones. So each one's only 77 meg. So now we can see uh, when and why this would be kind of helpful, but let's take it a step further. I'm going to double click on the sliced trace file and see how long this takes. Remember the first one was a minute, right? So this one is loading. And the thing to keep in mind with Wireshark is people think just because it's sliced it should take long it should take uh, a quicker amount of time. That's not necessarily true, right? Because Wireshark has to uh, decode and do a whole bunch of stuff in the background. So many times based on just the number of packets that will affect your load time. Uh, not so much the amount of data in that packet and and again I don't want to get into the intricacies and minutia of how Wireshark does things that's not what this is about I just want to find out how long this thing took to load when we compare it against the 3 gig trace file which took one minute and two seconds I believe so now we're cruising at the 43 44 45 second mark and we're gonna find out how long that smaller trace file took because we sliced it at 128 bytes I'm suspecting it's not going to be much different but let's find out and 55 so it was just marginally quicker I'm not gonna say it's worth you know getting into but yeah sure it was quicker but nah eh, I'm gonna say not by much right the last thing I want to do is load up one of those uh, 77 meg files like one of these and see how much these split files take to load so click click again and now you can see the benefit of having that load timer in the bottom of the screen right because now we know exactly how long it takes to, to load 4.8 seconds so that is much faster than a minute so now if I was to go to statistics endpoints conversations whatever I want to do it's gonna load much quicker right whereas before it takes a minute every single time you go to a report you're not really gonna use that much so the other thing to keep in mind is when you do uh, take these and break them apart into a whole bunch of other trace files as we have now you can leverage this other feature under file file set list files so it's going to go to that folder and it's going to find all the files and it knows they're all related and you can actually see them all here it tells me the start and the end time if you will the size of the file and then if I want to go to for example trace number seven if I just click on it pay attention to my title bar up at the top here because right now um, I've got split five zero 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 so it's the first one and I'm gonna to go to eight so watch click as soon as I click on it, I just clicked once. I didn't double click or anything like that. It automatically starts loading that trace file. And you can see it took 4.6 seconds. And you can see I'm on trace file number 8. So if I did have a bunch of trace files, people will argue that, oh, now you got to keep opening trace files to find stuff. Well, no, not really. If, if I know what time I want to find things at, it's just a matter of clicking on that trace file. And then it loads. And then I work on that file. And so on and so on and so on. All right, folks. So I hope that helps you out. I'll put the uh, batch file in the actual article so you can just copy and paste it and play with it yourself and have fun. Have a good day. Bye for now.